Field by Field, Mazex is bringing Canadian seed to farmers across Canada. Mazex is your source for high-performance soybeans and grain, silage, and grazing corn hybrids. Visit mazex.com to find your local Mazex representative. Hi, I'm Amber Bell, and this is Real Agriculture. I am standing here with Byron Long of Long Family Farm, and we're actually standing in a pretty cool trial that you've got going on here. This is a corn crop that has, you've been playing around with the spacing, and we have an intercrop in as well, right? Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing here? So doing some trials on direction of seeding, east, west, north, south, some population trials, and a a whole different mix of stuff. The, the mix between the rows is the same, but spacing uh, between 45 inch, 60 inch, and 75 inch between the rows as well. And is this your first year? No, this is the second year. Last year the numbers really made sense, so try more again. Great. Have you found that it's been successful in the way that you want to do more spacing, or how has it impacted your farming practices? Yeah, well, it's definitely it. It's up front. It's a little bit daunting. You know, it's it's more spray passes, more seeding passes, but financially it makes a whole lot of sense and um, yeah going forward definitely going to keep doing more of this it's it's very financially rewarding it's nothing seems to come anywhere near it not even swath grazing so yeah wow okay so and you are a both um, you're a mixed operation so you're yes. running cattle and grains and can you tell me a little bit about what you will be doing with this for harvest are you going to be taking it down are you going to be grazing it no this is strictly grazing just be running a poly wire through and uh, cows will be on about roughly a three-day rotation through here supplemented with some alfalfa just keep energy up force a little more clean up and it'll be, sorry, pears as well. That's that's the real exciting thing. Last year we put our, left the calf on side, longer wean time, really made for some bigger gains and uh, a lot more profitable at the end, yeah. Cool, and what's the intercrop mix? Oh boy, it's got five different clovers, some sorghum, some sunflowers, vetch, uh, forage peas, all oh, this Italian ryegrass, turnips, kale, alfalfa, and a bunch of different cereals. I mean, there's there's some wheat, barley, oats, rye. There's probably something I'm forgetting, but pretty That's much a kitchen sink. A little yeah. bit of everything. Yeah. So did you do the same mix last year? Uh, it was similar last year, had a little more um, millet in it. Uh, this year it's a different company's mix, but uh, pretty similar pretty overall, close. yeah. And did you do a feed value test on it? I did not last year. I just basically mm -hmm. crunched numbers on, on input and, and grazing time. This year, I'm going to work with Grow to uh, to actually give some real world numbers on feed value and nutrition. Yeah. What's going on? And like right now, we're on a corn tour with Gateway Research as well as Farming Forward. And I know that was some of the questions that were coming up: is soil testing? What have we been doing? What are we seeing? Right. So has that impacted some of what you're going to be doing going forward with more of the testing on it? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I should have had a. Two years ago was the last time a soil, soil sampled here. Uh, in the future, I'd, I'll definitely be doing a soil sample before and after just to see what kind of return we see. You know, if it does make a difference, if it's just biological changes or, yeah. Right, and you'd mentioned that this land had been bale grazed on a number of years ago. Four years ago, yeah. So really not, I mean, this is very low input here. There was no nitrogen put up front, no fertilizer at planting, at time of planting. Uh, when the drill came through, and we seeded the mix, we put down, uh, basically it was 35 pounds of actual N with some FOSS and a little bit of K. Um, so yeah, not a whole lot. It, it, I mean, there's shorter plants, but bigger cobs, more multi-cob. Mm -hmm. And the cobs are looking really good for this time of year too. They are, yeah. And right. for the year we've had, it was a very cool spring. So it's it was. still looking very positive. Well, that's fantastic. And what would you say to producers that are looking to do something of this nature, right? Because you've done a fair bit of this. We've <laughs> talked before and you've done a fair bit. So what would you say to someone who's just going in and being like, you know what, I kind of want to experiment with some of this stuff? Oh, definitely pick up the phone or get on the internet. The for University of YouTube has all kinds of great info on that. I mean, it's, it's a rabbit hole when you get into some of it, but... Uh, Talk to somebody who's tried it and there's lots lots of people trying this and doing it and it's it's it there's a reason it's why successful. would you yeah. recommend starting off small and going big or just jump yeah in? like anything I, I would say yeah try a few acres last year i tried 60 acres this year we're a little over 70 but uh mm -hmm. next year i plan to probably more than double that just because it's really really looking good right and how many head do you have how many are you going to be running on here how many pairs? well there'll be about 90 pairs on here okay yeah. fantastic and you expect that to take you through most of the winter 
it should get me very close to spring, yep. Very cool. Well, I am super excited to hear about how the winter goes. And thank you very much, Byron. Thank you. That was Byron Long on Real Agriculture.